I can feel my heart beating in my throat. This is by far the hardest video I've ever had to shoot. The hardest talk I've ever had to give. But I promise you, if you stick with me until the end of this, you will be greatly encouraged. I wanna start this video by saying thank you. I know many of you have been following my story and you heard the part about where my dad had an almost fatal stroke right before Christmas. And at the time of this filming, you'll be watching this a couple weeks later because I'm filming it ahead of time. At the time of this filming, my dad passed away exactly one week and a day ago. Again, I, I wanna thank you for your prayers and your thoughts and all your kind words, but I didn't come here to <laughs> cry on camera in front of you guys or to make a show. I really wanna use my father's passing as an opportunity to encourage you all and to give you strength because that's what he believed in and that's what he instilled in me and the title of this video says it all right in the middle the eye of the storm in the middle of your greatest tragedy pains and fears you also find your greatest joy if you just look around and you keep your eyes open when my dad passed, it was extremely hard to see it. You know, I'm not a person who's a stranger to death. I've seen it before. And I'm gonna tell you, every time I've seen death, it's hard. Even when I watched a person die who was trying to kill me moments before he passed, it was hard. So you can imagine how hard it was to watch someone who cared for me. You know, those of you that know my story know my dad is not actually my biological father. He's my grandfather and he adopted me and brought me into this family to take care of me because my biological father left before I was born or shortly thereafter. And he took me in and raised me like he was my own. And I told you guys a couple weeks ago, I actually got the quote wrong. <laughs> I got the quote wrong. So I'm gonna fix it today. I told you guys, uh, of course you watching this, it was a couple days ago, but I said, my father gave me a quote before I went to college. And it was a very important quote because it literally set the foundation for the life that I'm living today. And I hope I don't get stung by this bee that's now <laughs> flying around my phone. Let me get away here so I don't get stung if I can help it. <laughs> It'd be hilarious getting stung on my father's tribute video. But you guys know I like to keep it raw here. I don't do anything scripted. My father said to me the night before um, I went away to college. In fact, you know what? I got that wrong. My father gave me this quote the day before I went into the army. I got the whole thing wrong. The night before I went into the army, he touched me on my shoulder because he knew what I was getting ready to go through it was hard. You know, you're a young dude who's never been out there in the real world, except for a small stint in college when I paid for my last year and was working. And he knew I was scared. And he remembered being scared because he did the same thing. And he puts his hand on my shoulder, he says, and I want you to listen because the words he chose, he chose very deliberately and very carefully. You know, those of you that talk about how much you love the way that I talk, it's not on accident. I'm not good at this because I'm good at this. I'm gonna show you a clip before the end of this video where you get to see my dad talk. Back in 1996, uh, he gave a speech and I'm gonna, I'm gonna play that because the quote that I'm gonna play there is very important for the purposes of what we're talking about here today. He said to me, you've been a good son he started with son. You've been a good son, you've been a good brother, and you've been a good friend. And I always thought that was interesting that he chose the word friend because my whole life, that's how he treated me. Like we were best friends, man. Like he was my homeboy. I would come home from school and be like, what's up B? Like people call me B, that comes from my dad. That's not a nickname I got in school. My dad started that. And he was a warrior, man. And he taught me to be one. But a warrior, you know, I was telling my son last year, he said, Daddy is a, is a warrior, a person who goes to other countries and fights people. And I said, no, man. A warrior is a person who does everything in his power to protect and care for the people he loves. And that was my dad, man. You know, I've used that quote from Sun Tzu all the time where he talks about the best generals are those that treat their soldiers like their dearest, their own dear children. 
that was my dad, both as a soldier. He had a career as a 35 year old, 35 years as a soldier. I don't talk about that a lot. I don't talk about my father's accomplishments a lot because I don't like to brag. But my father was a badass dude. You got to understand that he fundamentally changed the way this world operates in many ways that you'll hear about as I continue to tell my story. I'll talk more about my dad now that he's passed. But you've been a good son. You've been a good brother and you've been a good friend. And for someone who reached the levels that he did, to call me his friend, that meant a lot because that dude was, he was my idol growing up. He still is, you know? And so, and then just, like I said, I didn't bring you here just to cry off camera. I'm not typically a very emotionally tear guy, but your father passed and will definitely get it out of you if you're not a crier. But I'll tell you, in the midst of, and I knew this day was coming. We've known this, for those of you that, I didn't give you a whole lot of details of the story because it wasn't, it wasn't a pretty story. You know, my father has been suffering for about six months. He was ready to go. So that's, it's good news that he's passed on because he's not suffering anymore and he was suffering. Warriors don't deserve to be bedridden. I don't care. And I don't think any human wants to be bedridden, but warriors especially don't deserve that. And so a part of my soul is relieved that God, that dad's gone on to be with God because he's not suffering anymore. He's passed the final inspection. And so I say all of this to say, this day that I've known was coming for the better part of three years, because he and I talked about this three years ago. Nothing could prepare you for the pain that you feel the day you get the news. I, I remember all the course of events that led up to my wife yelling, everybody get in the car, we gotta get to mom and dad's house. And I knew, as soon as she started screaming, I knew that's what was going on. And in my heart I was praying, hopefully he's still alive, still trying not to get stung by a bee. But kind of in my soul, I knew he had passed on. And I knew he was ready, because he, he and I had had a talk a couple months ago, just saying, Dad, if you're ready to go, we're ready to let you go. We don't want you to suffer anymore. And so he did. But in the midst of all that pain, watching my family to come together, all of our friends surround us with love and compassion and sympathy. And the smiles and the laughs and the jokes, like we just had breakfast for my mom's birthday. Right up here on my deck, on our deck, had, we had mom's birthday. And, uh, and this, by the way, this isn't my house. This is the house my parents live in. Uh, you guys see me film here sometimes. I'm working on getting to this level. <laughs> I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. But um, the amount of joy and laughing that's happened as a result. And God has a way of sustaining you. And you remember, I don't know if you remember the video, if you watch me all the time, you saw the video I did a couple weeks ago or a couple days ago, where I said, no pain is ever as great as you think it's gonna be in your mind. And no pleasure is ever as great as you think it's gonna be in your mind. This hurts a lot, a lot. God has been sustaining me with his peace and his grace and I've had this weird I can't explain it it's this only God could be doing it thing where I've had this weird sense of gratitude during this whole event this whole time there's been this thank you God that dad's not suffering thank you for everything he gave me you know a lot of people talk about how good I am at speaking how good I am on camera well at the end of this, you're gonna see my coach. <laughs> my first, you guys hear me talk about mentors a lot too. You're gonna to see my first mentor. And he's gonna say something very powerful there. And I'm gonna end it with him talking because I want you to hear the spirit of the man that still lives in me that encourages me to come to you every day and to help and to hope that I can change your life for the better, even if in a small way. But in his speech, he talks about how we still have a long way to go. And we do, friends. My dad used to always preach, we play hurt. And there's just one more fight. If you're losing, if something hasn't gone your way, you've been fighting and struggling, and you've lost, if you are still drawing breath in your chest and you can still walk, you still have fight left in you. Why would you give up so close to the goal? Why would you give up so close to the finish line? One more fight. One more fight. My brother told me that story because it was a letter he wrote to him when he was at West Point. Dad didn't give me that speech. He gave it to my brother and I asked my brother to teach it to me last night. One more fight. And you gotta play hurt. I know whatever you're going through in your life, it sucks. 
Trust me, we all deal with suck. One, you are not alone. Two, the strength is in you to overcome whatever this thing is you're facing and don't let anyone or anything tell you differently. And three, what else do you have to lose? Dad's gone. He's gone on to be with God. You know, and I always say he's never, he's not in my past, he's in my future, but I still have work to do and I owe it to him because him fighting through segregation and racism and the civil rights movement to become as successful as he did, I owe it to him to do better. Not for status, not for titles, not for money. I don't give, I don't give a rip about any of that. But I care about what are people gonna say about our family when we're all gone. And I owe it to my dad to continue that legacy because he fought so hard and gave up so much for us to be able to have a house like this and to be able to sit here and talk to you on a camera. We still have a long way to go, friends. If you're in the trenches and you're bleeding and you're hurting, you're not alone. Remember, pain shared is pain divided. Stop trying to do it alone. Stop trying to fight this battle, whatever it is you're going through by yourself. And stop thinking that it's some punishment or you deserve to be suffering because you don't. God created you to prosper. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and then subdue the earth. That was the first command God gave to man. Suffering, pain, going through hardship, it's a part of growth. But it's not a punishment because of some, something you did or something somebody else did. You don't deserve to not live the best life possible. And you owe it to the people who have paved the way for you, family, friends, or otherwise, to live the best life you can possibly live. And that's what I'm going to leave you with. And that's what I commit to you. I'm going to give you everything I have to in some way, shape, or form have a positive impact on your life because I know that's the way dad wanted it and still wants it. I love you, dad. Thank you for everything you've given me and I promise when I see you again, you'll be proud of the legacy that I've left behind. God bless you all. We are stronger than I. Stay tuned from a clip from dad. I love you all so much. Manana. Uh, before I begin my uh, brief remarks, I take this opportunity to congratulate all of you for being here and thank you for what you're doing to help make America a great and beautiful country. While we have many human weaknesses and are not perfect, it is because of people like you and the sacrifices of many Americans of all races and creeds that the United States of America is the strongest nation in the history of the world. Now, we still have a lot of work to do internally, but if we all pull together, I believe we can make this country what it should be for all Americans.